Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for Mars Rivalist. Stay for this video, I'm going to be addressing something that is important for you if you live in the United States, pretty much if you live all over the world these days, given how things are quickly changing. But, but specifically about the United States, Tucker Carlson has a, a great clip actually now, look it up under that name, regarding carjackings. This is the kind of thing that I actually know quite a bit about because I live with this sort of... Um, reality for for years for years in my life it was about yeah carjacking is just something that happens you just understand that it, it is happening all the time all day long and you just do what you can to avoid it a lot of this yes of course self-promotion a lot of that and I'm actually quite proud about the chapter specifically on defensive driving are covered in street survival skills of course for the economic aspect of a meltdown of your society, surviving an economic collapse, and for the practical aspect of what you do when your society becomes that, three survival skills. Now, in the chapter about defensive driving and uh, avoiding carjackings, keep in mind that these are many of the things I've done. Some of the things that you find in my book are common knowledge regarding defensive driving. You probably heard it before, and yeah, that works. Now, the stuff that I explained there that you haven't heard before it's there for a reason. It's because I've actually done it and it had worked for me. So when you find something that you've heard before, fine, that's great. When you read something in my book that it's, oh, that's, that sounds weird. I've never seen that. Well, I've done it and it worked for me. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. This is something that for many of you guys, it's, it's simply not a reality. This is not part of your daily life. And watching clips like these, like this video from Tucker Carlson, which I honestly recommend you, you watch because it's very good and it shows a reality that it's happening in your own country, yet many of you may not know. It, don't make the mistake of thinking, well, this happens in some of the bigger cities. You know, Tucker Carlson makes, of course, the, the political analysis of things, which is perfectly fine. I absolutely agree with him. Now, he hasn't got the hindsight of understanding that this will happen all over your country. This is getting worse, of course, in the main focus, you know, main, main spots of infection in the democratically run uh, larger cities. But believe me, this will happen all over the country as this continues to develop. Let's listen a little bit to what he says and talk a little bit more. Please stay for the video. I promise it's worth Tonight, it. Tonight, turns out the symptoms of societal decay are universal. They're not unique to a specific society. You recognize them in any country at any time, now or a thousand years ago. Always the same. The men become weak. The leaders get decadent. Law enforcement gets politicized. The currency gets devalued. And then things begin to come apart. Yeah. Pretty soon, doesn't take long, the society can no longer perform its most basic function, the reason we have societies in the first place, which is to protect the weak from the strong. That's why you have a society. Well, in places like this, it becomes, among many other things, very hard to travel anywhere. You just can't go where you want to go. With legitimate authority in retreat, roads are not controlled by the police, they're controlled by armed predators. And the armed predators take exactly what they want from travelers because they can. This is okay. I know some of you guys are annoyed when I stop, but I just don't want to miss some important points. He's making a, a fantastic point regarding, yes, carjacking. You understand how that, the mechanic of how that works. You're, you're being forced out of your property at gunpoint or you're being attacked. About how it becomes a, a dynamic of when you're out in the road, it's dangerous. This sounds kind of like road warrior-ish. It is exactly like that. Um... It gets to a point where, you, yes, cities are dangerous, but you know what's even more dangerous in the city? Not city. That's even worse. I mean, I've known of, of we call them uh, piratas del asfalto, like uh, uh, asphalt or tarmac uh, pirates, which is basically what they are. When you see a long, you know, a, a long road, an extension of, of nothing but road in the middle of nowhere, you actually have pirates. They attack uh, this is not like carjacking where, especially carjacking like it's happening right now, a um, you know, breakdown of society. Yeah, the, the initial stages of this stuff, right? The initial stages of this where you have, you know, kids, teenagers, violent thugs. But most of all, you know, this violent youth and, you know, people that understand that they can basically now get away with anything, they start doing these kind of things. But then you get to a point where you have 
organized damn pirates out in the road. And mostly they attack, you know, large cargo vehicles, trucks with valuable merchandise, you know, electronics. It's gonna be a point where it's food. I've known people that made a business out of having storage place uh, for, you know, contrabanded and stolen uh, cargo. <laughs> These are people that are not wearing, like, a, they don't have a damn parrot and a, you know, eye, eye patch and a wooden leg. Uh, no, they live in some of the nicer neighborhoods. They live themselves in some of the gated communities where, you know, people with good standards of living live because that's what they have. They're you know, pirating business, and they show themselves to their neighbors as, yes, I'm in import-export goods, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I, you know, best, small business owner, yes, we, we just import stuff, no, you steal stuff from the roads, and you resell it, because you're already in, in, a, in a mechanism along with, with local government and local police, and, you know, at a greater scale, the entire government of the country runs that way, then you're basically a freaking 2022 pirate. That's what you become. And you have gangs that you have people working on that. They, they communicate with radio. They have several vehicles. They know, they do intelligence. They know what vehicles are out there uh, moving back and forth with what kind of cargo. It happens also to, you know, cars. You know, if there's a, an operation that focuses on, you know, fancy cars. Yeah, fancy cars get carjacked. Yes. How about not fancy cars? Your crappy old car. Well, there's also a market for that. Actually, the car that was stolen the most back in the day when I was in Argentina were some of the more ordinary, cheaper, more common cars. You know why? Because when this happens, people are looking for cheap, affordable spare parts for their cheap, affordable, you know, ubiquitous cars, and they get them through dismantling and breaking apart some of these very common cars. So a very fancy car may not be specifically the target of one kind of um, of gang that focuses on certain vehicles. It may be your cheap car. Ah, oh, this is just, who would take this piece of crap? Well, there may be a market for that. These are all things that you just don't think of. This just doesn't compute in your head. Like Tucker Carlson is explaining, this is the kind of thing you see in, in South Africa, he says, or some of you know, in African countries that have fallen into a complete you know, oblivion. But in, in Latin America, this is very, very common. This is the way in which you basically live. It was an ancient problem. It used to be called highway robbery. And for <laughs> right. most of history, it kept people very close to home. Yes, highway robbery would be the idea that you're in the nasty, dirty city, but it's even worse when you're out in the, in the road, in the sticks, in the woods. That's why you had like a, a pistol in case a dog attacked you or some, you know, a thug attacked you in the middle of the, of, of, the, of, of the highway, of the road, in the middle of the woods. They would just, you know, cross your path and, you know, with, with, with a sword, with a stick, with an axe or whatever, you know, demand your belongings, your horse, your coat, your, 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 your money pouch, and you brought out your pistol and threatened them, and if not, you shot them, and that's how it basically worked. If this is the same version, but in, in modern age. Also notice how even though the cities are often the, you know, and, and I struggle with this concept a lot in the survival community, the purple community, yes. Uh, and the idea of being in a, in a big, you know, a collapsing city is bad. Sometimes that collapsing city is safer than being out in the road where some of these gangs specifically operate because they have the time, they have the resources, they have a perfect environment for them to make these, th these moves on you know, larger, more profitable targets. Turns out it still exists, but now it's called carjacking. Carjacking is the clearest possible sign that your civilization is falling apart. And that's why you find it yeah. in places like Somalia and South Africa, places where force, violence, and clan loyalty have replaced law and order, places where might makes right. In the city of Johannesburg, for example, a vehicle is hijacked on average once every hour of the day. Now, and once that happens, the there's really no coming back from it. Nobody's gonna build anything in a city with endemic carjacking. In fact, most normal people will leave as fast as they can, as they have in Johannesburg. As they are starting to do, we are sad to tell you, in the city of New Orleans, where carjacking is now a permanent feature of life. Last summer, a law student called Madison Bergeron pulled into the driveway of her home in New Orleans. 
As she gathered her belongings in the car, a young man appeared out of nowhere, stuck a gun in her face, and demanded that she hand over everything she had, including the car. He screamed at her. Okay, so you, you basically get the idea, the concept of what this is all about. Yes, you're uh, deprived of your property by force. It's not just your property. In the case of a young woman, or you know, you don't even have to be young. Or you may get murdered, you may get raped, you may get tortured, you may get brought. Yeah, again, things that Tucker Carlson will not explain because he probably, you know, he, he's never lived that way. I, I've gone through this for years. I mean, even before it got to that point, I, I was in in a country that was in a. You know, martial law declares a state of um, of siege declared where your habeas corpus and your basic constitutional rights were you know no longer there, and I still moved around. So you find yourself driving around a city that is basically yeah in martial law, and you're not even supposed to be out after 8 p.m. and you learn certain things, especially when this goes on for a long period of time. And then after that, you start getting into a situation where your country fell apart and everything is freaking dangerous. So little things, uh, you, of course, lock your doors all the time. You lock your doors when you're out of your vehicle. You lock your doors immediately when you're in your vehicle. Even before that, you know, things that I even don't even you know, connect. But for example, when I was a kid, the idea of having a motorcycle... Uh, for you, maybe that was cool. You know, the cool kid in kid in high school. He had a you know, a fancy chopper motorcycle. For me, even in my teens, that was stupid, because that's the kind of thing that could easily you know uh, be stolen and taken away from you, and you're vulnerable. It, it is in fact so much that way that back when I was in school, and I wasn't even you know, like <laughs> you know uh, um, you know about to to finish high school. Uh, my brother though was. And one of the, you know, uh, rich kids from school, his dad got him a, a fancy, I think it was like a, a ninja, a ninja motorcycle, which back in the day was the shit. You had a ninja motorcycle as a teenager. You were, you know, like like in, in these movies, the, 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 the Chad from high school that got the fanciest, coolest motorcycle. A couple weeks later, if I remember correctly, he was pissing his pants when he was suddenly pulled over at gunpoint ordered to get out of his fancy ninja motorcycle and it was stolen from him as predicted in a dangerous place and this was even before we went through this stuff so imagine how bad it got afterwards but understand the different mentality people like myself have when when you're a teenager and you think what a motorcycle no you're gonna be you know robbed at gunpoint and someone's gonna be forcing you out of the motorcycle the guy in front of that vehicle is gonna be getting in your motorcycle and stealing it of course that's what happens, right? Well, you may be thinking, no, in the civilized normal world, that does not happen. It's not normal rationing uh, for, uh, for a person to think that way. For me, it is. That's what I, that's what I try to explain to you guys. So I want to skip over, and I'm going to be doing a separate video regarding the political analysis that he does, which is very accurate and actually very interesting to do. But I want to focus here on the practical stuff because I want you guys to get some of these you know, essential Hi. things that for me are common sense. 11 years old. You, you lock One your doors. Yes, 11 year olds is stealing your cars, 12 year olds, 14 year olds, of course. These are super dangerous because they won't even go to jail if they even shoot you. So why not shoot you? They see this on TV. They've been told by that uh, older victim thugs said that, yeah, quote, he kill actually someone. Skipped like You'll a get child a lot of street cred he stole. And, and you won't Which... go to jail. Yes, I know it upsets you when I talk over someone else in the video. Uh, but yes, uh, this is extremely dangerous. When you have little kids, very dangerous. Sometimes, honestly, understanding this, sometimes it's better if a, if, if a professional crew just, you know, get out of the car, yeah, dude, you, and that's it. Well, you're always exposed to someone still killing you, raping you, you know, slaughtering you, mutilating you. The, he talks about a grandma that lost her arm. Vehicles are very powerful. They have a lot of, of horsepower and a criminal that has no regard for your well-being may rip your arm off like it happened to a certain grandma in the United States recently, apparently, during a, a, a carjacking, right? But 
it it may end up being this uh, going back to your house and staying there for a while and your family being tortured and this going from a carjacking to a home invasion and you know the most horrible nightmare you could possibly think of this is why you don't allow this to happen this is one of those lines i don't let myself find uh, end up in a situation where i'm forced and, and submitted in my vehicle with the possibility of me being tortured to death, slaughtered, mutilated, going back to my house. That's something that you just don't do. You run over people, you shoot people, you hurt people in very awful ways because that is a line that you will not cross, right? The kind of stuff that I explain here is slowly becoming your reality. And for many of you, for guys like Tucker that even see this and do this for a living in terms of analyzing these news... You don't get it still. You think that this is, you know, thugs and, you know, the politics. It can get a lot worse. It will get a lot worse given what already is happening in your country. You just don't know it yet. You just haven't gone through it yet. You will. Believe me. Trust me. You will hear some of these terrible horror, um, you know, stories that are even a lot worse than you're already seeing now. But going back, I want to end the video with practical advice. Lock your freaking doors, people. You know, be yeah, careful. Tell you his name because this thing, he's an at risk. I, I know. I want to show you some of the images, actually, uh, of some of these. The, the idea the that you will have again. This is covered in in chapter specifically in street survival skills. Uh, when is it that this happens? Um, really work, you know, you have a, a gun pointed to your face, but there's actually a few clips where. It, it just shows that people are just pull out of their uh, car. In, in 500 cases of these, the, the kids just open the kids. You know, these are criminals. But the, the carjackers just open the door because you leave it unlocked. They expect your door to be unlocked. If you just lock your doors, you will be avoiding most of these. Look at this. When you stop your car, when you stop your car, uh, for refueling, when you stop your car when going into a store, right? You have to be kind of quick about it. You get in and out. You look around. You scan for any suspicious people hanging around. You don't get out of your vehicle if you see that. I would have avoided, I don't know, 70, 80% of these based on, on the, you know, and I honestly don't live like that anymore. That's no longer my reality because it was terrible to live like that 24-7 for years. I've done that, I'm fed up, I don't want to live like that anymore. And fortunately, this is not something that you know, happens commonly, yet many of these things still hang with you. Now, yes, you have unavoidably relax and live in a different way, but for a very long time, it was about, yeah, why would I open my door if I see someone suspicious around me? Normal people, well, not normal people, but people that are not used to this reality, they just don't think like that. So, doors locked all the time when you're in and you're out. It got to a point where even if I'm in the, even till this day, if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I just automatically lock the door when I get out of my car, of course. Sometimes now, uh, I think of, well, but, you know, locking the door when you're in a car accident, uh, you know, the, the positive, the, you know, rescue personnel getting you out, being, and you start changing things, but please, right now, given how United States is at this moment, lock your doors all the time. You want to do that. It's the way in which you avoid most of these carjackings. You, you have your gun. That's fantastic. But locking your damn door will avoid this in the first place. Scanning before getting in and out of your vehicle will, will avoid most of this. All right. Using your vehicle as a weapon, the kind of thing that I explained here, it actually works. Yes, trust me on that. It does. Then I explain that in the book. It's stuff that you, you learn when this happens as frequently as it happens in some parts of the world. Um, shooting through windows, yes, so through glass, there's a lot of this. But if you avoid a lot of this in the first place, you're in a, in a much better position. Finally, there's a, a case, uh, yeah, out of the, 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 the car. Um, there's one in which, look at this guy, you know, trying to get back in, into his car because he crashing. Uh, there was a man, I, I can't find the video right now, but yeah, this guy, this guy, he's desperate because he left his kid, he was just running a quick errand, so he left his kid in the car, unlocked, and went to grab something, you don't do that when it gets to this point, when it gets to this point and you're about to become this the way you live in, you don't leave a child in a vehicle because someone can just jump in, 
steal your car with your child inside. That's what happened to this man. He's desperate because someone took off with his vehicle with you know an Audi or something, whatever it was. Doesn't matter. As I explained, it can happen with any car. So you don't leave a child in a vehicle because it may be it may be carjacked in just a fraction of a second. Little things that will make a huge difference as you continue down this journey, which I've already seen, and fortunately, uh, you know, I can share that with you guys. Folks, subscribe to the channel. My books are available in Amazon in the links below. See you in our next video. Take care.